Right, everybody, here we go. We have a lovely sunset in East Africa. I've just been doing my crocodile research here, and I was almost correct. Um, it would seem that the egg laying... Yeah, well, no, I wasn't really correct at all. Um, the mating is in August through to December, if I'm reading this correctly. Anyway, I'll have a look at it. I, I, I wasn't too far wrong. The mating season is largely sort of a little bit later than now, and then the, breed, the egg laying takes place um, one or two months after that. But as I did say, uh, thankfully I was correct, there is a distinct um, mating season. Isn't that a pretty sight? We can try and zoom in a bit there, if I can figure out... Oh, dear. No, it's wood. Is it? Was it a carcass? I think it's... Not unusual to find the floating corpse of a wildebeest or zebra or topi, accompanied sometimes by some of the smaller crocodiles who are... Un sure oh, they would do, unable to anchor them let's go back there it's a bit pretty isn't it let's go to the hippos at the end oh that's pretty I know the lens is a little bit dirty that's on account of the rain and it will just take a little bit of time for us to get down there and give them a wipe Woo! porpoising hippopotamus Astonishing stuff. Oh, there's much poison going on there. That is an enormous pod. It's probably a youngster getting in amongst, having a bit of a jolly time before... ...drinks at the moment. Oh, this is wonderful. Spoom all over the place. Turning gold in the light. Very, very lovely. Zoom in a little closer. Hmm. Steel Max, you're wondering who's... Oh, look at the little ones having a bit of a fight there. Steel Max, you're wondering which ones are heavier, hippo or crocs? No, hippo are much heavier. Well, big hippo. Big hippo bull weigh in excess of 2,500 kilograms. So that's two and a half tons. And the big crocodile seldom will get too much over a ton in this area. A Nile crocodile, that is. Isn't that cool, watching those little things there? <laughs> yeah, I think the, I mean, I think the longest crocodile ever found, I mean, you get stories of them being over seven metres long and up to sort of nine metres, but very seldom is that true, I, you know, or uh, conclusively established. And, yeah, those, those big crocodiles would probably weigh in the region of 1,200 to 1,500 kilograms. That would be a really, really big one, though. Of course, many of these sorts of, um, you know, many of these sorts of, of weights come from wild guesses, wild estimations. Because, of course, you have to catch them first and then weigh them. And it's not an easy thing to weigh 1,500 kilograms of crocodile. I'm just getting a few bits of information here saying that, yeah, you'll find a, you know, five and a half... Well, here's a 5.7, 5.8-metre crocodile that only weighed 725 kilograms. So perhaps 1,000 kilograms is really too big. I've certainly heard of a crocodile over 1,000 kilograms, which is a ton. So perhaps those, that is true, but perhaps it's an apocryphal hunting story. So let's say under 1,000 kilograms, let's say around 900 or so for the biggest crocodile. So still less than half the size of a big bull hippopotamus. And I'm not sure which one I'd like to meet less in the water. I think I'd much rather... I think I'd far rather not meet a crocodile, actually. 
Kirsten, have we got the um, the mountain cam? What I'm going to do, everybody, is just try and find these two quite astonishing little weavers that are fighting with their reflections. They're called Baglefecht's weaver, or the Baglefecht weaver. What on earth that means? I couldn't begin to tell you what is Baglefecht. No idea, but just look how beautiful these things are. Sorry, let me just get this in there. It's a little bit difficult. Uh, there we go. Now we've got two here. And one of them is a male. In fact, they might, yeah, one of them's a male. One of the solid head, solidly black head is the female. How cool is that? Look how beautiful they are. That's the male on this side. That's the female who's just been flying around. He's attacking what he, she presumably thinks is some competition for her husband. Aren't they just stunning? I think these are my new favorite weavers. Baglefecht weaver. I have to keep saying Baglefecht because I tried to remember it all day and then I keep forgetting it. Baglefecht weaver. And it's not Baglefechts. It's, uh, I don't know what Baglefecht means. Perhaps somebody could enlighten us. And they're sitting just outside the window. In fact, uh, well, probably about... <laughs> about two meters from where I'm sitting. No, four feet from where I'm sitting, actually. I wonder if we can't just show you quickly. Let me have a go. If I can't get a front-on view of them through the window. Here we go. There they are, everybody. I'm just going to try and brighten the picture slightly. Um, yes, how do I do that? One second. One second. There we go. Yes, now we're just trying to get some focus. Oops. Look at them there. Now, they're seeing their reflections, of course. And one of the things we say, one of the things we say about birds, of course, is that they are not self-aware. And that's why they will bash, each, bash themselves against a, a mirror. I'm not sure that that's really true. They just don't know what mirrors are. Dina, you say this is a new bird for your list. Well, it's a new bird for my list, too. And this is number 17 on your Mara list. And they're having a bit of a squabble now. Silly, silly people. Don't squabble. It's Sunday. I'm just trying to brighten this slightly for you, everybody. You bang the gain up a bit. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Look, she's so cool. Sorry, 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 sorry. We lost it just a bit close in for the focus. Let me get out again. Now that's him there. Yes, what a vicious fellow you are. Now you can see me coming, you see. Yes. Now, they'll be seed eaters, of course. Good time of the year. Lots of red oat grass seed. We'll just focus on her now. Hi. I think she looks very, very disinterested in him. I also think she, like, think she looks like she could be on diet. She's got about four chins. Now she looks embarrassed because I've noticed that. Mersel, you want to know if other species come and fight, the, fight uh, their reflections? Yes, there's a number of sparrow species here who've spent a lot of time fighting their own reflections. Sorry, I keep trying to get a bit close and the camera can't quite focus. Oh dear, she's getting very upset now. Sorry, my dear. I do apologize. It is that double chin though. I mean, I'm afraid you do have a double chin. In fact, you've got about four or five of them. There we go. And you can see in the background there, I'll just pull focus to it. 
there is the beautiful Olalola escarpment and just in the background there, I wonder if we can't get to it. Just up there you can see the aloes, beautiful aloes, lovely rock formations and just above the tree line there is Angama Mara where we are very, very privileged to call ourselves at home. There are our little friends. So sweet. <laughs> I don't know why they haven't gone to bed yet. I mean, it is quite dark out there. But soon they will, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, maybe let's cut to another feed. My hands are getting a bit tired now, if you don't mind. And let's go to the main north crossing, where we have just the golden light and the peace of the Sunday sunset there, which I think is rather marvellous. Oops, the daisies. Let me try and get control of that camera again. Hippopotami having their. Oh, there's a one of them going to the loo. That's quite interesting. We don't often see that. I, I mean, they do it in the water. But what he was doing there, of course, is. And dear watcher, apparently you were asking if they defecate in the water. Well, certainly they do. And that flapping of the tail is normally what they do to spread their dung in a territorial marking, but clearly also in the water. And I suspect there was quite a lot of territoriality associated with that one, because otherwise he would have just done it under the water as opposed to lifted his not insubstantial buttocks out of the water and then flapping his tail. I'm sure that is a territorial marker to the other hippopotamus around him. Hmm. Gorgeous. Righty, we're going to wait here, see if anything develops in the dusk while we do that. Taylor, apparently, astonishingly, seems to be looking for animals. 